action or is actually embedded in wider process of structuration. And he had an approach towards that. There's an interesting article um, out by Ian Hacking on Foucault and Gottman. So I wouldn't be averse to extending out from Gottman to these sorts of other topics that uh, other members of the panel have discussed. And certainly the materiality, the actor network theory, I think it needs to be embedded or some approach towards material embedded in governance, it's a starting point, but I wouldn't rule out these other sorts. I mean, the legal environment is obviously vitally important for anything you're doing in online stuff. No, I was just sort of thinking about that as you were speaking, because actually, ironically, one of the things that's come out of the kind of different position, actually, on the internet, is that it's implicitly really anti-regulation, which is why, you know, it's a, in the end, it's a very neoliberal position, and anti-regulation, which is why, actually, I'm seriously concerned about it, you know but somehow that's implicitly in there. And that is, as is so often the case, you get the chapter on Wikipedia, which is the kind of model for, you know, voluntary informing of, you know, generous social norms, and that's the answer to things, and clearly it isn't. So thank you for the point about kind of social structure, you know. Yes, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, hi Trevor, uh, Christian van Dolf from the Netherlands, uh, the Raten Institute. Uh, let me share uh, with you my, my experience with using Urban Gottman uh, in uh, researching ICT. Uh, I started research, doing research in RVD, uh, GPS systems, all sorts of systems which uh, can track people. And from Gottman's per perspective, I noticed that you continuously interact with information systems and build up this virtual identity which in a sense, you need to manage, you know. It's not only about privacy, but you want your identity to be out there as something uh, you like. So I came up with the word identity management, because impression management, as Gopin uses it, is less interactive, it's one way. So for identity, your virtual identity, you are managing through uh, uh, information systems. So uh, I was quite happy with myself writing a book about that. But what happened next was quite interesting. I got all these techie guys coming to me, being very angry. They said, well, we've been using the term identity management for almost 10 years now. It's about access control. You, you get a number, you log on to a system, and the number authorizes the access, and you can you get access to it. Uh, being both a techie guy and a sociologist, they said, well, that's actually the same, because the system says something about you. Um, and what happened next was quite interesting because the steady guys said, well, you come to a conference, you explain about it, and what happened in the Netherlands was that the sociologists and the technology guys found each other on the word identity management, and it actually changed. And if you go to the web of knowledge and you go back, you actually see that in the 90s, the steady guys used the phrase identity management, but the sociologists were there first. In the 80s, they started writing a lot of work about identity management. I did that identity evolves through interaction. So uh, my question to you, well, it's actually only an experience I uh, share with you. My question to you is, uh, have you heard of identity management being used in other countries? In the... um, no, but I'm, I'm not using that part of Gottman. So um, that, that would be my, my straightforward answer. But what, uh, what you said makes perfect sense, and it seems interesting to one is interest, I would avoid the word, you use the word virtual. I'd be trying to avoid the word virtual in thinking about these things, but identity is certainly part of, of, of what I'll be looking at in this project. This project is in early stages yet, and I've gone back to the earlier part of Gottman, and um, eventually I'll be working through, I think, more aspects, and we'll hopefully get to that. Um, are there another couple of just very sort of quick comments or questions before we close? Oh, there's somebody there. Um, I'm Mike Fisher from uh, MIT. Um, identity management, of course, is a standard term in, in, uh, uh, in computer science. Uh, the techie guys are absolutely right. Um, for many years. Um, I'm intrigued by the degree to, to refer to David Hess's um, query that um, it's, it's lovely to hear culture being uh, rediscovered and it's lovely to hear Goffman being rediscovered uh, and all of that. I mean, there are other strands of STS that aren't represented on the panel here that have dealt with communication as well. 
Um, and I, I, I don't want to defend Jonathan Citrain, but I would like to point out that one of his major projects is monitoring um, the attempts of various governments in the world to shut down the internet. It's a very important process, and I want to, um, to reference that by asking some questions about implications. It strikes me that much of the STS that is represented on the panel takes a very micro-engineering point of view. Materiality, yes, lots of disciplines talk about materiality. There's nothing particularly new about that either. But what are the implications for society of the ecologies of communication? Nothing was mentioned about the visual, for instance. The visual has become uh, a really important component of the new technologies. And so I, I wonder if um, uh, people would like to, um, well, and as long as I'm doing a deconstruction of some of the things that were said, um, mass media, the, the ecology of media, is of course have changed over time. Mass media is a term from the 50s and the 60s. Um, it has been segmented in many different ways, and that's one of the things that the overlapping of the ecologies of communication does. So I wonder if, if the panel could address um, something about um, uh, topics like um, the openness of society, um, recursive public spheres, what Sheila Jasanoff called civic epistemologies, all of these things that the communication structures presumably are the infrastructures for, both soft and hard. Thank you. larger social issues. Um, um, as, as you saw, I had a very uh, interactional perspective, with a macro perspective, so you, you could wonder how, how I can relate that to larger issues. And one larger issue to, to which what I've been saying is related is uh, uh, an issue which is also related to the density of, of communication material, the, density, the information the communicative density of these ecologies, actually. Not media ecologies, but uh, uh, at a more micro level. If you read, if you read, uh, it must be with journals. We, we have about every, every month, uh, there's a double page in a in in large, well known journal about multi activity and how we we might be cognitively reshaped, because this is very much a field in which cognitive science is relevant. Our cognitive style will be reshaped from the mere flux of information and communication we are, we are, we are receiving. I think what I've been trying to show, my, 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 my focus on performativity and pragmatics, is that in many of these uh, common sense discourse of multi-activity, which is becoming an issue of public debate, uh, uh, with, expert, with particular expertise and studies and, and, and claims which, which have been made about, about that, uh, is that uh, in, in many of these papers, when they come to cognitive science, there's a confusion between information and communication. Basically, it's the same. But if you look at it from a pragmatic perspective and a pragmatic, pragmatic perspective, it's very different. Having your phone ring is very different to be exposed to, to different page, uh, media pages on your screen. And, and I think uh, even the micro perspective I've been developing uh, may allow uh, to, to develop a perspective on that kind of issue which is becoming uh, more and more global uh, public debate issues. We've just thought of something to say, so we're going to, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I very much like, like your comment, and I must say what it made me think is I wonder if that's the strongest thing STS can give to communication studies. I mean, at the LSE, uh, for example, we have a terrific media studies department, and there are terrific political economists there who do the work on kind of regulation and policy and all those aspects of things brilliantly well, um, and I never think that we've got that our strength is teaching them how to do that. So I suppose um, 
That's why I've concentrated on the things I have, because I think these are the aspects where we've got something to bring. I mean, you know, they do what they do extremely well too, so that would be my response to that. Anyway, Trevor, very quickly. Yep. Um, just a couple, of, a couple of things. At the music side I've been looking at, um, how reputation systems based on digitization lead to this ranking. Amazon.com is another good example of this. So a complex opinion is rendered into a yes, no. It has massive implications for how humans and human choices are framed in this digital environment. That would be one example. But it also can go the other way at this music site. It enables certain regimes of intellectual property to be broken down, so it's easier to make mashups and so on. So that it sort of works both ways, but there's just a couple of examples. But I think the issues you raise are absolutely the right ones to raise as well. I mean, again, um, thank you for, I'm sorry I'm going to have to wind it up. I've got a couple of announcements to make, but I really very much want to thank you for sit, uh, sitting through this um, plenary in this heat. Um, I was, um, I, I need to announce that the Microsoft Research Reception is at five and it is absolutely open to everyone. You don't need a ticket, everyone is welcome to go and they're putting on a very nice reception. And where you'll find it is on the first floor of the University Co-op Restaurant. So that is starting at five. For those of you who've got um, banquet tickets, uh, the banquet is on the second floor of the same building. So if you go along to the University Co-op Restaurant, um, as I said, the reception's on the first floor. The banquet um, will start at six on the second floor. And for those of you who would like to come to the business meeting, which I hope is some of you at least, um, that is in room um, 1312, which I think is just sort of actually opposite the registration desk. Okay, so can I thank all the panellists very, very much for a stimulating session.